Hey, this is Evans at Motorcycle.com and welcome to our Baggers Brawl, where we've gathered four baggers with fork-mounted fairings and we're gonna hit the road and see which one works the best in our opinion. Now for each trip, we always need a hook to hang it on and we've decided to go all cowboy on this one and look into some of the ghost towns of the new and old American West. For this trip, we've gathered the new kids, the Moto Guzzi MGX21 and the Harley Davidson Street Glide. Now, the Street Glide is an old name, but what makes it new is the Milwaukee 8 engine. So we want to see how it shakes up in the bikes in this class. Then the returning bikes are the Indian Chieftain and the Victory Magnum. The price range of these four bikes ranges over $1,600, with the Harley Davidson's base model checking in at $21,000 and the Victory topping it out at $22,600. So let's go for a ride and see what happens. Wow, two days of riding all around Death Valley and California Southwest. We saw some great uh, ghost towns, and most importantly, we've got a lot of miles in with these bikes. And when people think about baggers, they think about you know wind protection and being able to carry some stuff. So what do you all think about the wind protection on these bikes? I always thought they thought about bags. You're killing me, John, you're killing me. <laughs> Uh, personally, I'm, I'm not a fan of the low windscreens. They're all kind of blustery to me at various speeds. Really? That's what I think. That's well, just me. not all of them. I think the Indian does a pretty good job with the, its electronic one. You can have it down low where it's blustery and or put it up high. It's blustery also. It's, it's, <laughs> it's less blustery. <laughs> I, th I, think it, I think that's a, a, a thing of... of Length of your torso. Yeah, I think it's all, it's all it's all individual. You know, pick shorter people. It's what what direction the wind's blowing when you happen to be on that bike. You know, for example, it the the Indian. I love it when the windshield is up. There's a little bit of buffeting, but not much. But when it's down, when the weather's warmer, I I feel like my head is in clearer air, and I I absolutely I think it's spectacular. The only one of the bikes that I found to be particularly blustery is what you're sitting on, Tom, the uh, Magnum. I found that at highway speeds, get up above 75 miles per hour, there's a high frequency buffeting going right around the top of my helmet, which uh, isn't that much fun for me. Well, I agree with John, since we're of the same stature, these all buffet in my head. Well, the Moto Guzzi presents an interesting uh, situation in that it offers the least wind protection of all of them. This morning, uh, when it was chilly, it almost felt like there was no wind protection. I know the pressure wasn't on me, but it, the, it allows the air to get around much more than the others do, which if you live in a hot, humid environment, I think would be really cool. If you're out riding this, like it was this morning at 47 degrees, you're gonna hate life. So the, the Guzzi has to always be a little different, done it. It's more, it's more sporty than any of these, and that's reflected in the little bit smaller fairing. But I think for, for me, again, this one's pretty smooth airflow for me. The airflow. A little concave thing. It's got a, got a relief at the bottom. For me, this one's pretty smooth. The airflow, I, you know, I have no complaints about the yeah, air coming off of it. Nice. Just that when it's cold, there's a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. So another area in which the Moto Guzzi is a little bit different is in the size of the saddlebags. Um, they're much smaller. And they came with the, um, the, the, the snazzy little uh, carrying cases for yeah, your they gear. Yeah, the, the matching liners on the inside when I got it. But to say that the Guzzi's a little bit different is I think the biggest understatement we can make <laughs> in this comparison. Not as the only as the Guzzi always different because of its engine configuration, but I mean the use of carbon fiber on this guy, it's kind of like semi-solid front wheel that it's got going with the big carbon fiber, you know, uh, disc in there. It's overall styling. Uh, the rear tail section, the way they did the brake lights on it, I mean, this is just a machine that is, stands by itself among these other three bikes easily. And let's not forget the name, Flying Fortress. Flying Fortress. How freaking cool is the name, Flying Fortress? Uh, for some reason, I still prefer the MGX-21. I don't know oh, why. You're but... lame. <laughs> <laughs> but one, one feature about the bags that I really like is that it, it locks in multiple places so that it pulls it uniformly closed, which is really important for side opening bags. 
to help them maintain their water tightness. Also, one thing separating these bikes is we have two bikes with big front wheels, they're down on that end, and two bikes with you know, more normal sized front wheels. What did you guys think about the handling of the bikes? Did the big wheels uh, change things at all or? Uh... The Guzzi, they, you know, they realized they had a front end flopping problem before this bike came out because they put the little kind of device in there to stop it, kind of an anti-flopping mechanism on the inside of uh, the forks down there. So in uh, parking lot maneuvers, you know, slow stuff, yeah, I mean, you've, you've really got to muscle that, the front end of that bike around. Once it gets up to speed, you know, it rolls just fine, nice and stable. It's not the fastest, most flickable thing in the world, but, you know, it's going to hang with the rest of these guys. So yeah, well, the things that you know we really care about on motorcycles are the engines, right? And we've got two uh, new models in this group, the MGX21 and the Street Glide. The Street Glide is an all new engine and Moto Guzzi has that awesome uh, jugs in the wind uh, engine uh, that people, people either puzzle over or dearly, dearly love. So what do you all think about um, power of these this quartet. I'm a big fan of this Goosey. Uh, not 90 degree V-twin, just like a Ducati. Perfect primary balance. It runs so smooth. It's nice. It's got tremendous torque, it feels like. Even though not quite so many cc's as the other bike. So. Yeah, it's, it's about 350 cc's short. It but still, like when, we, when we did the roll-ons on the freeway, guess which bike pulled away from all the others? From 60 in top gear, huh? From 60 in top gear. It sm smoked all the other ones. Pretty Shocking. Pretty so, I think, yeah, like we were saying, it's kind of the sport bike of the bagger. Yep. It's an Italian version of a, of a bagger. About the Harley engine, the um, Milwaukee 8, I really, I really like the new engine. I like the lack of vibration. Um, but I've said all this before um, when I was at the, after the introduction. What do you all think? I think it works really smooth. It works good. It works good. Mm -hmm. It works good. That's the, 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 best, the best feature of the Harley is, is the new engine. It is. A uh, bunch more torque. It didn't make it that much faster, though. It's still kind of the slowest bike out of the, uh, the four that we have here. Uh, so. I don't know if it's the slowest one, but it's not much faster than the Victory, is it? Kind of the, 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 what I don't like about the Harley, though, is the engine still attached to that uh, gearbox. It still kind of sounds like trains mating a lot, you know. It's kind of like the same little clunky thing. It's always been. Um, I don't understand it, but some people absolutely love that that clunkiness. I think when they built the Indian, they kind of tried to replicate that thing, because okay? that's pretty clunky also. And that's another thing I like about the Guzzi. It's like a, a sport bike gearbox in it. It's kind of, you don't really need to use the clutch you have to get rolling, which is, which is nice. It shifts nice and smooth. I, I like it. On a windy road, the Harley works really well. I was I was on it at the end of the, end of the night last night in the dark, and so sometimes I was having to make some pretty abrupt turning inputs as the road went in a direction I didn't expect it to. And um, I thought it worked really well. I like the new suspension. I would put the uh, new rear suspension in there with any of these others, whereas before I thought due to its kind of limited travel that it wasn't that great, but uh, I think it's much, much better this year. Okay, since we're, we're needing to wrap this up, because uh, the sun is set behind the mountains here at Death Valley, and we've got, what, 250 miles left to ride? Riding position and rider comfort. Since we've got several hour spaces, which bike would you fight to be on first? Oh, uh, I would prefer, you know, I don't want to have to fight you guys. I would prefer. <laughs> I'd prefer either the Harley or the Indian. I like their more neutral uh, seating position. The Victory and the Guti put you in a little bit more kind of laid back cruiser esque, which puts too much pressure on my, my spine, mm. where, you know, I can adjust and move around on those guys. I like, I like their seating positions more. John? Uh, I could be happy on any of the four for the, the three three hour ride home, really. Uh, the Guzzi would be the least favored for the last leg of the journey, but not, not by that much, really. It's not so bad. Uh, I would choose the Harley first, the Chieftain second, and for the reasons Tom said, the upright riding position. This seat on the Harley, I just, I absolutely love. And the Chieftain is a close second with overall riding comfort but I, the seat is what s separates it it's you know the the it's the perfect amount of padding and uh the perfect shape for my uh seat sensors you ate like a huge breakfast and then a half pound cheeseburger i i you i was some seating tonight i was living extra large on this trip 
Personally, the three American bikes here, the Harley, the Indian, and the Victory, I like how the three of them have this little lip at the back of the seat to help give you some support back there. The Guzzi was just way too spread out for, for my comfort. Um, but if I was to split hairs and pick one bike to sit in for the next three hours, I might go with the Indian. Uh, I know you guys like the Harley, and it's 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 a very close second in my book, but I think just the way the Indian puts me ergonomically, I'm favoring that position more by a Nat's hair than the Harley. That's kind of all that separates them, really, isn't it? Like a Nat's hair, they both got great seats and very similar ergonomics. Yep. The so, Victory's close, too. John and Troy set me up for the closer with the whole Nat's hair thing. I, I have no idea who's going to win this shootout, which bike is going to win this shootout. So we're going to do like we frequently do and weasel and say, go to Motorcycle.com, read the article. Reading is good for you and there are lots of cool pictures. Within that article, you will find out which of these four won the test. That's it. Have a great evening.